Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be uh, creating this slider here on the screen. Um, it's all made with HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. No libraries are used here. But yeah, we use uh, DOM events, that kind of thing. So yeah, I hope you enjoy guys and let's get going. Cheers. Okay guys, so to get started here, I've got the three usual files, index.html, style.css and the app.js. And we're gonna create our uh, boilerplate here. And within the body, we're going to say, uh, create a div for a class of slider, okay? This is going to be the outer slider, which houses the inner slider, as well as the um, slider components. And then within this um, slider, we're going to um, add a div, as I said, with a class of inner slider. So, or slider inner, sorry. So you can see here, div, with a class of slider inner. And then within this inner div, we've got um, seven elements, okay? So seven divs, each of a class of slide image. And each of these divs contain an I tag with a, with a, um, a font awesome uh, logo, okay? So, or icon, sorry. So you can see we have a football icon, a uh, golf ball, biking, just random sports, really, okay? So in order to get these to work, uh, you're going to need the font awesome CDN, which I just got the mini, uh, mini version here from this website, cdnjs.com. Copy the link tag, and then we'll just pop that in our header section. Okay, so if you open this with live server, you'll see here's our kind of sports logos here. Okay, so then the last two things you need to do is just link to the script, uh, the uh, app.js script. So say script source app.js, and then in the header, we just want to link to our style.css. Okay, style.css, like so. Okay, that's it. And then let's come into our style.css now. Let's get the global settings first. So we're just going to select, um, use a star uh, symbol here. And within this uh, part, we're going to say margin zero, padding zero, box size in border box. And then come underneath this, we're going to select our eye element. Okay, so I've got the eye and the eye hover. For the eye uh, elements, which are our font awesome icons, we're just uh, setting the color to white. Font size of three rem to make them a bit larger. Pointer events auto, as you want to be able to uh, perform some you know, these could be hyperlinks or anything like that. So you want to interact with them. And then I've just set, set the um, cursor to pointer, okay? And then when we hover at the, uh, these uh, font awesome icons, I'm just changing the color to this kind of purpley color here. Okay, and then come underneath this, we're going to select our slider element. So we have class of dot slider. Remember, this is the um, outer slider here, which is containing the inner slider. Okay, and then for the CSS, we're just positioning the slider absolute, left 10% of the screen, top 30% of the screen as well, width of 80% to fill the majority of the screen. And we're giving this parent div a height of 200 pixels and um, an overflow of hidden. This is important because when uh, the inner contents, so remember they're, they're going to be able to be scrolled along. So we don't want to see the kind of overflow uh, from this parent div, so therefore we're hiding the overflow here. Okay? And then Next we want to do underneath this is select our slider inner, sorry, inner slider. And again, we're positioning this absolute relative to the parent element, top zero, left zero, uh, the height of 100% of the uh, parent element, which is the slider in this case, a uh, width of 200%, so it's pretty much double the size of our parent slider element. And then we're saying display grid, okay, because we want to position these evenly across the inner slider, uh, each of the slides, sorry. so. Yeah, it's going to contain these seven slides here with a class of slide image. We want to position them evenly along the slider. So that's how we're doing it here. And we're setting this grid template columns um, uh, to repeat seven times as there's seven child elements uh, to one fraction unit. Okay, So they'll all be um, the same size spaced evenly along the uh, inner, inner, inner slider. And then we're just giving a gap of five pixels between each, each slide. Okay, We're setting the point events to none in this case. And we don't need this transition. I can take that out. Okay, come underneath this, let's select our slide image next. These are just pretty much basically the slides, okay? So remember here, slide image. And what we're saying here is we're giving them a height of 100%, a background color of black. We're aligning the text to center, to center the font awesome icons, and we're just giving the uh, slides a bit of padding as well, a free run there. Okay, and then that's pretty much it for our CSS. So if we save that, you'll see here's our slider, okay? Obviously, you can see half of this slide here at the end is a. Uh, you can't see the overflow as we uh, applied that overflow hidden 
uh, CSS setting to the parent div, okay? So what we want to do is now use JavaScript to be able to drag this slider along the page, okay? So let's do that now. Let's go into our app.js file. And the first thing we want to do in this app.js file is just select the, uh, the actual slider element, the out slider, and the inner slider, okay? And then come underneath that, I'm going to set three more variables here. So we're going to say let pressed equals false, let start x, and let x. And you'll see why we're setting these in a minute. Um, the next thing I want to do is just we're going to add uh, multiple event listeners to our um, slider, our parent slider, okay? So let's do the first one, we'll say slider add event listener. And here we want to listen out for a mouse down event, okay? So this is similar to a click, but um, it's basically when the user holds down on the mouse, um, when they do the first initial click, and they, and they don't release the click, this is what a mouse down is, okay? So this is what's going to enable us to be able to drag along the uh, slider, okay? So in here, we're going to create an arrow function, passing in the event, and then we're going to say pressed, uh, that's going to equal true, okay? Because we want to signal that the uh, mouse is actually pressed down, and that's what we're changing this variable to, okay? And then underneath here, we're going to say start x equals e dot offset x, okay? Um, and then after that, we're just going to, let me just show you what that's, let me just console log this just to show what that does, sorry. Console.log start x. So if we come into our console here, you'll see now, when I click, you'll see we're getting the pixels relative to the left-hand side of this parent uh, element here, okay? So if I click here, it'll be nearly zero, pick one pixel. You can see 30 pixels from the left, okay? So that's what that offset x is doing. And then what we want to do here uh, is for this star x, we want to subtract um, the inner slider dot offset left, okay? Um, and let me just console.log the inner slider dot offset left. So now, if we come here, that'll be zero for now, okay? And what this is, this just, um, this is going to give us the uh, number for how many pixels the left-hand side of this slider is uh, compared to the parent node, okay? So the parent, the parent element here is a slider, and this uh, inner slider the offset x shows us how many pixels to either the left or to the right of the slider uh, the inner slider is, okay? And what we're doing, we're subtracting this, so we get in the starting position of our mouse and we're subtracting the slider the offset, inner slider the offset left as we want to be able to drag in proportion to where we are on the screen, okay? Um, hope this will make more sense as we go, go along the video. And then kind of underneath this, we're just going to say slider.style.cursor equals grabbing, okay? So let's just see what that does. You'll see now when we click, we get that kind of grabbing hand appear. Okay, so that's it for the first event listener. The next one we want to do is um, we're going to do the slider again. Going to say add event listener. We want to listen up for the mouse enter uh, event, and that's just going to trigger a function. And all this is going to do is we're just going to say uh, slider dot style dot cursor equals grab. Okay. So that what that does is when we go over the top now, you'll see we get the kind of hand appear. Okay. And then when we click, we get the kind of closing hand. So that's what that does. Okay. And then kind of underneath this, we're just going to uh, do one more, uh, well, a couple more event listeners. So say on mouse leave, we just want the mouse cursor to go back to the default pointer, okay? So when we leave the slider, that will change our mouse back, okay? Like so. And then after this, we're just going to say, actually, Joe, what? I don't even think we need this. Let me just comment that out a second. I think it just works anyway. Yeah, it does. Okay, I'll leave that out for now. It's just a waste of lines. So kind of underneath this, we're going to say, um, next thing we're going to do is say slide after add event listener mouse up. And this is just going to set the, um, the cursor back to the grab hand again. Okay, so you'll see here now when the mouse goes up, when it's down, it closes. When I lift up the mouse, we get the hand opening. Okay, so that's what that does. And then I just want to add a general event listener to the window now as well, okay? So we're just going to say window.addEventsListener mouse up 
And when the mouse is up, we're going to set that pressed variable back to false, okay? So remember when we push down, we set true, and then when it's up, we're setting that press to false, okay? So now, we're nearly, yeah, pretty much got a couple more things to do. So let's just add an event listener to our slider again. We're going to add a mouse move event listener, okay? So say slider, add event listener. Let's just say mouse move. And here we are going to, again, pass in the event and into an arrow function. And we're going to say if not pressed, okay, which means if um, pressed isn't true, then we're just going to simply return out of the function because we don't want to do anything. Okay, we only want to, to fire the events in this function if our mouse is pressed down and therefore press will be true. Okay, so then come underneath this, I'm also going to just do an e.prevent default. And this will stop like us highlighting any text or something like that. That's what this e.prevent default does. Okay, so it'll just be purely dragging along the slider. And then here I'm going to say um, x equals e dot offset x. Offset x. Okay, and as I said before, that's just that gives our uh, mouse coordinates relative to the uh, the parent slider div uh, to the uh, the left the left. Um, our coordinates relative to the parent div, okay? And then underneath this, we're going to say inner slider, uh, and then we're going to say dot style, and then dot left, and that's going to um, equal, and here we're going to do some back ticks, and I'm just going to say here, and we want to take that x, and then we want to minus the start x picks, and then we're going to say picks after, okay? Like so. Okay, and then I'm also just, let me just see if that's working now. We should have some kind of, yeah, you can see now we can drag our slider, okay? Because what we're doing is we're, we're getting the current um, coordinates relative to the left-hand side of this inner div, and then we're subtracting that from the uh, the the kind of offset of the parent div, okay? So that's how it knows where we are when we uh, drag out in a slider. Now the only thing I want to fix here now is I don't want to be able to continue scrolling, okay? When we get when uh when this uh, gets to this uh, the left hand side of the inner inner slider gets to the left hand side when it meets the left hand side of the parent slider, okay? We don't want to be able to keep scrolling; we want it to stop. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a function called check boundary. Okay, it's coming under here. Function check boundary. And what this is going to do, the first thing we're going to do is um, select. We want to get the um, actual position of the inner slider and the outer slider on the pages. Okay, so I'm going to say let outer equal slider, which is the parent slider, and we're going to say get bounding client rect. And then I'm going to say, do the same thing for our inner slider. So say here, let inner. And that's going to be inner slider. Okay, so just to show you what this does, if we uh, console.log uh, inner or outer, and we'll do the same for the inner as well. And if we just fire this for a second, we'll say check boundary down here. And then if we come to our console, you'll see what this does, it gives us the um, the positioning of each of our elements, okay? So here's the um, the outer element up here. You can see uh, from the top, it's 239 pixels from the top of the screen. Um, and that's the same thing for our div because they're both in the same position at the moment, okay? But it just gives you basically the coordinates for each of our elements in rel relative to the actual view pool, okay? Okay, so coming underneath here, let's get rid of these console logs. I'm just going to say if, and here we're going to use the pass int function, and I'm going to say uh, in a slider dot style, and here we can say uh, dot left, um, if that is greater than zero, and here, what I want to do is say in a slider 
dot style dot left and here I'm just going to say equals zero pixels like so okay so that should have tied us up from the left hand side of the uh, slider so let's just see now you can see if I scroll that's not working because I need to add the check boundary function up here okay so now if we come back you can see now I can't scroll to the left anymore it stops okay because every time we um, every time we're saying uh, the inner slider dot style dot left is greater than zero uh, it just basically resets the styling position to zero pixels okay so that's why we can no longer drag okay and now I just need to do the same thing for the, the right hand side so in order to do that uh, I'm just going to say else if and here I'm going to say inner dot right is less than the outer dot right okay and then we're going to say uh, inner slider dot style um, yeah and then we're going to say dot left and that's going to equal and here we're going to say back ticks and we're going to say minus and then we're going to do a template literal here and we're going to say we're going to take the inner dot width okay and that gives us the entire width in pixels of our inner slider okay and then we're going to basically subtract uh, the outer dot width okay and then just simply add pixels at the end so now this should when we get to the end here you can see now we can no longer scroll to the right okay so just to explain that we're basically taking the inner width the entire inner width of our inner slide and the reason we're subtracting the outer width is because we want to keep this position in the uh, in, in the uh, viewport still okay that's why we're subtracting the outer width from our left positioning okay and now I can just take this get rid of this and that's it that's basically our draggable slider uh, complete. So let's just um, there you go. Okay, guys. So that's just how to implement some kind of draggable functionality using vanilla JavaScript. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy, guys. Any questions? Uh, just leave me some in the comments. I'll try my best to answer. Um, let's remove that. But yeah, you can see I, I'm a, there's quite a few event listeners. There are libraries that do this kind of stuff, but you know it, it doesn't take too long to implement in vanilla JavaScript. So yeah, as I said, any questions, give me a shout, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.